after all of that, you will now come and still collect the rubbish insults that our mothers collected. I never me wash for you. Who is your father in the army that I will wash for you? <laughs> me cook for you. Who is your father in the navy that I will go and own stove that I'm cooking for you? A lot of women are out of abusive homes because the man pushed them out. If the man hadn't pushed them out, they would still be dead till today. You guys, Nigerian women are so male-centered that it actually kind of physically hurts for me to witness how male-centered, how male-crazy Nigerian women are, okay? Like, before you come here and say, oh, not all Nigerian women, I think that is actually implied, okay? I'm talking about the average Nigerian woman, and I dare say majority of Nigerian women are actually male-centered, male-crazy, male focus it is insane to think about okay i'm going to give you guys so many examples so many real life examples and also examples from things i have watched i just finished watching the previous big brother yes i watched the previous big brother but i didn't talk about it because i was just using it as an escape i didn't want to turn it into a job because if you are a regular watcher of my channel <laughs> you will know that I have not been as consistent as I used to be and that's because I've been going through a lot, okay? I actually wanted to take like a very, very long break out of YouTube but I tried not to leave my channel bare so all this while that I've been posting here and there just know that I have been away from YouTube, okay? Um, yeah, I'm going through something that I'll tell you guys about when it is over and that will be next year, okay? But just know that your girl has been life has been life in but it's all good i'm fine i'm doing well i'm glowing i'm having a good time i'm just yeah just having fun watching series movies and all those things i love to do i'm just doing them and i'm not sharing them because i wanted to just enjoy it for the sake of enjoying it okay but anyway let's get to the topic because this topic has been on my mind for a while this previous big brother i'm going to be drawing examples from it but i just want to tell you guys that it is actually crazy how much nigerian women die for the validation of men like it's so insane i'm not even just the truth is that it's not just nigerian women okay the truth is that it's all over the world if you watch the current love is blind you know that it's not it's not really a nigerian woman thing but i'm basing this discussion on nigerian women because those are my target audience and i feel like nigerian women our own is kind of unique in some ways in some ways but you know it's not so unique to us okay <laughs> anyway before i keep rambling i didn't even write anything down so i'm just going to be pouring my thoughts as it as they come to my head okay when i say that nigerian women are male-centered i'm not talking about the village woman who comes from poverty who maybe is trying to get her head in the world and you know is trying to use men to better her life okay i'm not talking about just some obscure woman somewhere that is still holding on to uh old ways of doing things okay i'm talking about modern educated wealthy successful women in this day and time that are just misbehaving because of men okay now what makes this conversation even very funny to me is that i feel like online we say a lot of things about men about how oh men are scum men are trash men are this men are that or, you know women empowerment women are the future the future is female feminism you know whatever whatever a woman can be whatever she wants to be i feel like we say all of that online while in real life we are doing the complete opposite okay now i'm even more shocked when i realize that those of us who now if you know me you know that I'm not someone who claims not to need a man or not to want it. No, in fact, I'm not someone who claims I don't need men. I need men in my life, please, okay? I need a man. I need my father. I need my brothers. I need my husband, okay? And well, that's the extent to which I need a man, Shah. But I need those men in my life, right? But even generally speaking, we need men in our society. Like, why are we always deceiving ourselves that we don't need men? Like... When was the last time you saw a woman who was, you know, climbing up the highest uh, uh, building to do some kind of construction work, okay? When was the last time you saw a woman working as a bricklayer, working in the sewage, you know? A, when, when, have you ever even seen a, a female a, a, a trash collector, 
Okay? So there are things in this life that men do that we women either we cannot do it or we're not willing to do it. And men are doing these things and they are just doing it and living their lives. And I appreciate them for that. Do you guys, do you see what men do offshore? Do you see what men do in the oil rigs on the high sea? Do you see what men do? We need men in this world, okay? So when we make say, you don't need a man, men are this, men are that, men are that, and you know, they always have so many negative things to say about men. I am not one of those women because I understand and I recognize the addition and the contributions of men to our lives and to this world that I cannot in good faith come and start talking trash about men in general, okay? Men are risking their lives daily to make this world a better place, okay? So I'm not even saying they are doing more than women, okay? Because as much as they have their own that they're doing, we women have the things that we go through as well. And in fact, it's because of the things that we naturally go through as well, that is why I even recognize and I really appreciate the presence of men in our lives because it enables us to go through what we go through without extra stress, okay? At least for me, I can speak for myself. I know what I contribute to my family. I know what I contribute to my society. I know what I contribute to people around me that... I am happy that I have a husband who makes things easier for me, okay? And I, re I really appreciate that and I really need him there to make things easier for me because I cannot come and be suffering both ways. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you have to do some things, okay? You have to take away some of the load from, my, from me, okay? I want to have that freedom to do some things for myself, for my children, for my life without thinking about certain things. Like, example, in my own case, paying bills, like... It's not like I cannot pay bills, though, okay? If I was left to do some of these things myself, I always say it anyway. If for some reason, God forbid, something happens and I have to take care of my children and take care of my life by myself, I will do it. I'm not the first woman that will go through that and, and excel, okay? So I will do it and I will thrive, but I just don't want to do it and thrive in it when I have a husband who can do it, okay? So there are women like me who recognize the contribution of men in our society and we appreciate them for it and we don't see we don't like put men down just to elevate ourselves we can elevate ourselves on our own but we don't have to put men down for it right so those of us we did one side then on the other hand there are women who put men down all day all night just to elevate themselves everything is always in comparison or in competition with men and stuff like that i really don't care about that but you know those women exist we know them we see them we hear them they are very they are the loudest actually okay it still boggles my mind that these classes of women exist but if i look at things objectively in real life it is the class of women who tend to fight men the most, they are the ones who misbehave for the sake of men the most. And I don't get it. So for instance, let me give you guys an example. For instance, when women talk about feminism, even though I say I'm not a feminist, right? I, I always say, oh, I'm not a feminist. That's because I don't like to give myself tags. I don't, I don't agree to any tag except I'm a Christian finish. However, it does not mean that I don't uphold feminist values. Let me tell you guys one fun fact in case you guys do not know. My project in university okay my final year project my final year thesis dissertation whatever you call it right was about feminism i can't even remember the exact topic right now but it was about feminism when people were still reading chimamanda's books for the fun of it i was reading chimamanda's books with the aim to extract feminist themes from it right so I'm not just in my mother's books, I even had other books I read that time. Like I was looking for feminism or, you know, the themes of feminism in different books and I was talking about it and I was mining everything together and I was, you know, coming up with solutions to problems and stuff like that and things that are facing women, okay? So I've always been about women. I've always been able to remove myself from situations that does not favor women, okay? And the funny part is that I also don't agree with the tag girl's girl because I feel like we have a way of just bringing up tags and then misusing those tags, okay? What people refer to as girl's girl in this day and age is just women who excuse all the rubbish of other women, right? Like, you, once you don't excuse the rubbish of other women, they say, I'm not a girl's girl, okay? Or once you admit that, you know, men and women are important, are equally important in the society, you're no longer a girl's girl. You're only a girl's girl when you come and make it look as if, oh, women are the most superior human, superior beings that... <laughs> <laughs> that ever existed while men are low or men are in the same category with warm earthworms and stuff like that right 
and fun facts, even earthworms have their role in this earth that is very, very important. So, as much as I don't come and start virtue signaling because a lot of the things people do online is just virtue signaling. All they are doing is just trying to make you look at them as, ah, I'm a good person, I fight for women, I'm all about women. But if you go and look at their day-to-day -day lives, if you go and look at what they do around them, with women around them, with people around them, you will see that these ones are just not it okay so i'm just giving you guys some of this backstory and some of this context so that you can better understand what i'm going to be talking about okay i know that some people are still going to misunderstand me and that's fine okay those who get it get it and those who don't want to get it like get out <laughs> <laughs> but anyway no, don't get out everybody should just stay let me just finish my thoughts okay anyway so this last big brother you guys it just gave me an overview of the woman kind nigerian woman kind okay because it's a social experiment and on this social experiment we can actually extract some things that apply to the society at large okay so i'm using big brother as a case study Let's start from Anita. I think that's the person's own that pained me the most in the house. Yeah, each time I look back on some of the things that Anita tolerated, I'm like, girl, girl. Okay, so if you guys did not watch it, I know that many people did not watch this year's Big Brother. Um, there's a lady called Anita who is a supermodel, okay? Or she's a model. She is a beauty queen, okay? Not beauty queens like us, that is unofficial. <laughs> You know, some of us are beauty queens, it's just unofficial. I'm talking about an official beauty queen. She won Miss Nigeria and went ahead to represent Nigeria at the Miss World beauty pageant. And she came up as, I think she said she was top 30 or top 12 for another category or top 30 for, you know, whatever. But she came out, you know, well. She came, Because that competition, they used to have like over 60 girls or something because it's from all over the world. I think they used to have like over 60 girls or even 100 girls. But basically, she came up, she came out as top 13. She's a supermodel. She's beautiful. She lives in the UK. She works in healthcare and stuff like that. So she came to the Big Brother house. She's 29 years old. And when she came, she said, oh, she's looking to get married in the next one year. Okay? Now, all this being said... When you hear all these things about this person, would you believe that she'll be fooling herself for one 24-year-old boy? Would you would you would you fathom it that a 24-year-old will be able to deceive this grown woman into misbehaving? You won't believe it, but it happened live and direct. Now, I don't really have a problem with the age. I oh, oh, no, let me not even lie. You. I have a problem with the age very well, okay? But I don't have a problem if she doesn't have a problem with the age, okay? My problem is, when she came into the house, she said that she never dated even her age mates. She never dated younger, but she never even dated her age mates. She always dated, that the least she dated was two years older than her, right? That was the youngest she has ever dated. And for somebody who is 29 and who is looking to settle down in the next one year, the probability of her meeting a fellow 29-year-old, I'm not even talking about younger now, the probability of Anita at 29 meeting a fellow 29 year old who is ready to settle down with her in the next one year is actually very low. It's actually very low. <laughs> okay? So let's not even talk, let's not even think about dating younger, right? That's fine. That's on one side. Now, she started dating this guy Tofa, okay? Um yeah, she started dating Tofa and Tofa told her initially that they were age mates even though Tofa is a 24 year old he told her they were age mates and you know she said okay fine i like you you know i've never done this but you know i can make it work for you right so let's just continue chilling so she continued chilling with him till the topic of age came up one time and then she kind of sensed that Tofa was younger than her right? So she pressed him, pressed him, pressed him. He kept denying. This guy denied. I remember watching that night and I was so pissed off because even the Big Brother Niger production, they are so fixated on Anita and Tofa's story. Like, it was insane how much screen time these two people got, right? Trust me, I watched that show from day one to the end. Like, I was that jobless. <laughs> I was that jobless. So these people had so much screen time. This guy spent over two hours just to answer the question of whether or not he was her age mate or younger right so after everything you know he gaslit her gaslit her 
Like she was crazy, like she was assuming things, like why can you even think that? You know, he was just going up and down, left and right and everything. And she was like, okay, fine. Um, if you say we are, we are the same age, okay, that's fine. The only thing is I know that when we go out of this house, I will find out the truth, okay? They continue dating. So Ebuka came one day on stage to kind of insinuate again that Tofa was lying to Anita. He, he was very slick with his but you know, if you get it, you get it, that kind of thing, right? So I think Anita kind of got it. Even Tofa as well kind of got it. So he was like, okay, let him just go and confess to Anita. This guy goes to Anita again, drags his mouth, drags his mouth, drags his mouth. Eventually, he admitted that he was younger and she was asking him, okay, how old? And he did not tell her how old he is. He was just rigmarolling, rigmarolling, rigmarolling until she now said, okay, are you 26? And the guy said, yes, 26. Okay? Lie number what? Number two. Okay? So she forgave him. They, no, initially she cried. She found, oh, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. Yeah, drama. The next day, she was kissing him in the party. Okay, like she she reconciled very quickly with him. Even though, yes, the housemates tried to make them reconcile, but she herself was ready to reconcile because I don't know how housemates will help me, will force me into reconciling with a 24 year old or 26 year old. Okay, that lied to me in such a very very wicked way. Okay, but anyway, fine. She now reconciled with this guy. Now, this girl is now out of the house. She has now heard that the guy is 24. She's still there wearing his t-shirt and saying, oh, she doesn't really care about the age, right? And I'm like, is you is or is you ain't dumb, right? It is not about the age of the guy. It is about what this guy has done time and time again to show you that he is a chronic bloody liar. Right? This 24-year-old has gaslit you, has lied to you, has done all sorts to you just to get you in the house and even outside the house and a whole beauty queen, a whole, um, I don't know what she says, whether she's a lab, something, 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 a whole educated, she has her own money, like, she's the epitome, I think that's why I'm even using her as an example. She's the epitome of everything gracious about a woman, right? She's beautiful from head to toe. I mean, even though she's very skinny, she doesn't really have boobs and bum bum like that, right? But you will not look at her and say she's ugly. Like, she's a beauty, like, certified beauty queen, right? She's very smart, very intelligent, well-spoken. She comes from a good home, right? From If I judge by the, the, the video I saw, she comes from a rich home as well, right? So, money is not even the problem, right? But even aside her father's money or her family money, she works here in the UK. She has her own house. She has her own job. She has her own everything here in the UK. This is the same person that is bringing herself down. I even wrote it because I was chatting on Twitter a lot and people came for me a lot on that Twitter. Like, <laughs> you know the funny thing about me on Twitter? People don't understand that there's nothing you can say on Twitter that will pay me because I'm ready for you. Like, I'm ready. Like, I know what I'm doing. Like, I'm not here. My emotions are not invested into anybody. So, if I'm praising anybody and you insult the person, okay, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't, or you come and insult me, it doesn't really change anything for me, okay? But anyway, I'm writing on Twitter that you came down from your throne, right? When the guy admitted to you that he's your age mate right because you've already said it that you have never dated your age mate your standards was never your age mate. not even that the youngest even dated was two years older and you want to settle down in the next one year right to even enter ship in big brother house is even one way of falling your hand number one right then number two you came down from your throne sat on the on the on the bench hmm? with your age mate in quotes then you now realize that this guy is not even your age mate he's three years younger you now came down from the bench and sat on the floor. Then you now left the house and found out that he's actually five years younger. You decided to dig the ground and then enter inside and sit down. <laughs> why? If you're not a male-centered person, why on earth would you do that? You didn't even give the guy enough smoke, right? Because if that first time that this guy lied to her, she had ghosted him, not talked to him for a few days, maybe like... Kept managed to see him for like, let's just say one week, right? And maybe she now eventually 
went back to him, I'll even give her some credit. I'll be like, okay, at least circumstances, you know, the way the house is. Because I don't really blame them for entering ships to an extent. Because the way the house is, you're seeing the same person over and over again. You're locked in these 10 weeks. You don't have your phones. You don't have distractions. You don't have anything else. You just have each other there. It's okay to catch feelings. It's very normal to catch feelings. Especially when, you know, the person you're catching feelings for is actually reciprocating. It's very, very normal to catch feelings. Okay, so I won't really blame you for catching feelings and going back to him after all of that if you had given it time but which one is that in the night he told you this by the next day you're already kissing him the next night like make it make sense it will never make sense to me anyway let's move anita and put one side the next person on my chopping block is wani okay if you watch that show, Wani is a twin. Her twin sister is Handy. They are both DJs. They are, they are both kind of popular. I feel like I've seen them before, but I didn't really pay attention to them. But I feel like I've seen them before. So they're quite popular. They're doing well for themselves. You know, they're DJs. They're established and all of that and all of that, right? Now, you came into this house. You met a guy named Sean who... Age-wise, he's okay. Looks-wise, he's okay. Um, Personality-wise, he's okay. You know, and all of that. That one, Sean, is also successful to an extent, right? I mean, as successful as you can be to be on Big Brother House, right? Because I always say that real successful people, real wealthy people don't come to Big Brother House, okay? Argue with your keyboard there. <laughs> Argue with your ancestors there. Real wealthy people do not go on Big Brother. I don't care whether your father's name is Nnamdi uh, Azikiwe uh, or whatever you want to call your, your grandfather. Real wealthy people, people like people with actual wealth do not go on Big Brother. That's just facts, okay? But, you know, but at least to a, to a large extent, he had done football, he had done reality shows, you know, to a large extent, he was okay, and he came to this house, they met each other, and they liked each other, okay? That's totally fine. I don't have an issue with their shipping. To me, they are equally yoked, okay? They are very, very much equally yoked, unlike Anita and Co, right? These ones are equally yoked, they are good. They said shipping from day two of entering the house, that's fine. Tell me why, as a woman... Eh? I know people say, when they say, as a woman, bang, I'm going to tell you guys, as a woman, why are you cooking, cleaning, picking up after a man who is not doing the same for you in any capacity? I don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, I don't get it. You guys should just make it make sense to me. Okay, make it make sense to me. See, I've been married for a very long time, but before I got married, I actually dated I never, I can say it with my full chest, if you, I don't even have ex, first of all, okay, I'm nobody's ex, but people that I was whatever in then, right, I never, me wash for you, who is your father in the army that I will wash for you, <laughs> me cook for you, who is your father in the navy that I will go and own stove that I'm cooking for you, now, don't get me wrong, if I'm cooking for myself and you want to eat, I can give you some, but that's, Oh, I want to eat semu. Me too. I will not stand up. I go and turn semu. Hey, <laughs> wow, wow! In my next life, maybe I should come as a man. No, never. But let me just say, all of you in your next lives, you should come as women, as men, because. I don't get it. You will cook for this guy. You're, you're washing, you're doing his laundry, you're arranging his bed, you're doing everything. Aside that, you're warming his bed, though. You are warming his bed. You know. You are doing all of these things, giving him BJ's. Hey, God. Oh. You are doing all of these things, and this guy is not reciprocating. I'll get to Sujanelli later, okay? At least in the case of Sujanelli, you could see that it was mutual, right? To a large extent, it was mutual. But in the case of Sean and Wani, I'm not saying they are unequally yoked, too. They actually fit in other aspects. But in the aspect where you are doing too much for this guy and all he has to offer you is speaking English and trying to tell you that you are rude and that you, 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 you come across as this and that you don't know how to think or how do you think, you know, how do you reason, you are behaving childish. You are, every time he's correcting you, every time he's giving you lecture, every time this guy is beating you down with his words. That's the only thing you are gaining in that relationship. And you are still there, calling yourself Odogu. And a man is shouting at you literally in front of everybody, embarrassing you, embarrassing himself in front of everybody. And you can't even still give him one day space. You can't give him one day space. If you manage and give him a few hours of space, your body will be peppering you. You have to go back to him. 
Make it make sense, my, my, my dear sisters. Is, is that how you people are in real life? Is that a level of rubbish? Because some of you women are shippers. You are applauding the sheep. You are worshipping the sheep. You feel like, oh, they are a match made in heaven. Is that, how you, is that the kind of things you put tolerate in your relationships in real life? No wonder these men have the audacity. No wonder. Sometimes I wonder where these men get their audacity from. You are the ones giving them this audacity. You are giving them for free. They are not even allowing them to pay for their audacity. No wonder. Like, I was so dumbfounded watching this thing unfold in real life. In real time. Right? You are a beautiful girl as well, though. Don't get me wrong. Wani is actually a beautiful girl. She doesn't know how to package herself well. Right? That's my own opinion. She doesn't package herself well. But when she's well packaged, the girl is a beauty. You are a beautiful girl. You're well spoken. You're intelligent. You're making your own money. You and your sister, you and, you and your sister are DJs. You're living in Lekki. You have your own money. You are working. You are working with big brands. And then you came on Big Brother House, and you are letting a man sit you down and be talking down on you. Not once, not twice, not three times, not four times. Almost every week, you receive at least one or two times tongue lashing. One or two tongue lashings every single week. Make it make sense. Like, how low is your self-esteem that you will sit down there and tolerate that rubbish? I do not get it, though. I don't think I will ever get it. I don't think I'll ever get it. And I'm saying this because I know that a lot of women are in that situation in real life. You have a boyfriend in quotes, you have a husband in quotes, you have a fiance in quotes, and this guy is dealing with you. And you are there. <laughs> he loves me. Okay, how does he love you? He's correcting me. We are making the same mistakes that our mothers made. Not my mother, shall. Not my mother. Thank, thank God for my mother because maybe that's why I'm the way I am. Maybe that's why I don't say things the way other people say things. It might be because of the kind of mother that I had, okay? But I'm speaking generally. We women are making the same mistakes that our mothers made. And what's worse for some of us is that we are even now with more burdens than our mothers had. Okay, in the in olden days, maybe not our mothers, maybe in the in the olden days, women were focused on you know taking care of the home, taking care of the kids, while the men did all the providing. Yes, it limited women in a lot of ways. I'm not even advocating for that lifestyle for every woman. Okay, there's some women that it works for, while there's some women that it doesn't work for, right? Fast forward to 2024, we have more women who are working, who are making money, who are grinding, who are toiling day and night. You know, getting their own bags. They are, they are taking care of themselves, taking care of their families, taking care of their children, taking care of their... I'm talking about even the single ones now. Some women are actually the burdeners of their homes. I mean with their parents and their siblings. They are training their siblings through school. They are working hard. They are working like men. They are doing businesses that even men cannot do and succeed in. These women are entering it and succeeding in it. After all of that, you will now come and still collect the rubbish insults that our mothers collected what did you gain my dear sister so what did you gain what did you gain from all the education that you got what did you gain you say oh those women those days they were illiterate they didn't know better they didn't know okay you that you are now educated you are now you, are, you have masters you have phd you have uh, 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 all kinds of certifications in different in different fields you have social media you have the internet you have all kinds of tools at your disposal why are you still chopping the same insults that our mothers and our grandmothers chopped? Explain to me why. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, let's leave Wani and um, Anita. Let's go to other women in that house. Almost every woman in that house, her story was tied to a man. The fight she had in that house was because of man. The quarrel she had was because of man. The cries, the tears were because of man. Look at Ruthie. Ruthie's own was even... I think Ruthie's own is even the worst. Let me even leave Anita on one side. Ruthie, she has a daughter that is 15 or 16 years old, right? She's 31. She had the girl at 15 or 16. So the girl is about 15 or 16 right now, right? You have your own business. You're a boss girl. You're a this, you're a that. You enter the house. You started fighting other women because of mayor. That is a how old social media person. How old is the guy? Now, if the guy was even maintaining the same energy with you, he was giving you all the love and all the attention, maybe I'll understand it. But it's not that the guy was even after another person. You kept asking for validation from morning till night. The guy was just turning you like this, turning you like this, doing you eh, 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 rooty bender, <laughs> emotion bender. The guy was bending your emotions, bending your emotions. 
and you were still there. And you call yourself, oh, I'm a this, I'm not your mate. We're not on the same level. You're telling other girls, you're not on the same level. But you are going after men that are even lower than those girls. So make it make sense. Make it make sense. So when I say that women are male-centered, that's what I mean. Okay? People like us that even say, oh, we love men, we want men, we, I need a man, I love my husband, I cannot do without my husband. Me, I even say that, I know they chop one quarter of waiting in the chop. Like, I can't, I can't imagine myself even taking some of the nonsense that some of you take. So make it make sense. If you are dating somebody and the guy is treating you like this, how will you have mouth in your marriage? How would you have mouth in your marriage? You are seeing all the red flags. The guy is a walking red flag. Not only is he a walking red flag, he is wearing red flag on his body. Still, you are, you are with shades. You are acting like you don't see. Hmm? Ray Charles, you are acting like you don't see. You don't, you don't see the red flags. But the red flags are there. Then when you now end up with this guy or if he now breaks your heart in fact it's even going to be a positive for you if you don't end up with him right if the guy breaks your heart before you get married that's even a positive for you but let's just say he either breaks your heart or he maltreats you in marriage you now start crying and start complaining and start lamenting men and this men and that when you saw all the red flags you had several opportunities to let this person go but you held on to him like like you know like your life depends on it why are you guys so male centered that you cannot even see that you are behaving like you don't have sense why can't you see your, can, why can't you see beyond your nose why can't you see why can't you see how your actions are screaming pick me pick me pick me pick me <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you see it? You can only call another girl pick me, but you cannot see how your own actions are, 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 are the, you are the biggest pick me of them all. You say, oh, you are a girl's girl, you are a girl's girl, but you are standing with a man and you are discussing other girls in a very derogatory manner. And you say you are a girl's girl. Anyway, you guys, it was just so shocking for me watching that show. And even in real life, the stories I've been hearing, I've been seeing, People will come out, when people come out and talk about, oh, their relationship that broke up or what men did to them, I will check the women. These women are not nobodies. They are not women in the village that are not empowered. These are empowered women to the core. Talk about beauty, they have it. Talk about money, they have it. Talk about eloquence. Talk about uh, um, charisma. Talk about courage. They have all of these things. Talk about business. Talk about uh, entrepreneurship and the workforce. These are top women, top industry leaders. These are women of substance that are, that are misbehaving for men. So we need to get to the bottom of it at the end of the day. We need to get to the bottom of it. Tell me now, those of you that are watching me, why do you think that women misbehave because of men? Don't come and tell me it's because she does not have her own money. I always say this thing. It is not an excuse. Not having your own money is not an excuse, okay? Don't say it because she doesn't have her own money because we've debunked that in several times. A lot of women with their own money are funding men who don't even have money and those men are using their money to carry women outside and are insulting them and even beating them and even killing them, okay? So it's not about, oh, a woman should have her own money. Her own money is not the problem. If you have your own money but you cannot use your own money and walk away from a disastrous, situ from a disastrous situation, then your own money is useless. Having your own money does not change anything. Okay, so it's not about, oh, she woman needs a, a economic empowerment because if a woman is, a, is a empowered economically, she will be able to walk away from... We've seen so many empowered women who are not walking away from shit. Okay? Let me know. Let me know because I'm confused, to be honest. Like, I'm really, I'm literally confused about why a lot of women are taking so much rubbish from men. You'll see even older women, you see older women who... The husband is not doing anything reasonable with his life. You are the one making money for yourself. You are the one funding your life. You are the one. Maybe it's that thing that Bible said that in the last days, some women will just tell a man, "Let me just have your last name. I will take care of myself. I will, I will do everything for myself. I just want to have your last name." Maybe that's what is happening right now. Maybe that's what is playing out right now because it doesn't make sense again. Like it's nothing you can use and logically explain why Nigerian women, especially are acting this way. Maybe women are just too emotional and, you know, or it's just love or it's just, did they swear for them? I don't know. I don't know what it is, okay? I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the cause of, or, or, on Eve. I don't know what it is, but I just feel like women, we need to do better, okay? We need to do better. We need to actually be logical about a lot of things. Yes, keep your emotions aside. Yes, it might hurt. It might hurt to lose this person. It might hurt to not be with this person. 
it should hurt, okay, because you actually like the person, so it should hurt. But you should be strong enough to withstand that hurt and do what is best for you. Many women today, let's even talk about this one. Many women today that say, oh, I left an abusive relationship. It's because the man pushed them out. What? It's because the man pushed them out. They stayed until the man was like, I can't take you anymore. Get out of my house. Like, for real, I'm not even kidding here. Like, for real, a lot of women are out of abusive homes because the man pushed them out. If the man hadn't pushed them out, they would still be dead to you today. What? So, at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm going to leave it to you guys to just explain because I'm, I'm even tired. At this point, I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> if I break my brain... <laughs> Do you have more things to add? Do you have any suggestions? What do you think women should do differently? What do you think? How do you think we should raise our kids differently? I mean, I have three daughters. I know how I'm raising my three daughters, but let me know what I should implement extra so that they don't end up like some of these women that we are seeing these days because it's, it's actually defies logic at this point. Um, yeah. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And if you have any more topics that you want me to discuss, let me know in the comment section. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.